live at the Radisson Hotel in Green Bay. This is Locker Room with Local 5 Sports Director Bert Griffith. It was win to get in, and Green Bay did just that against the Bears. Now there's definitely something to love in Titletown as the Packers prepare for a playoff date with Dallas. Get ready for another edition of Locker Room. Good evening and welcome to another edition of Locker Room right here at the Cedar and Sage Restaurant inside the Radisson Hotel and Conference Center. Great crowd for the weather out there. Now the Packers, guess what? They are back in the postseason. Up next, Mike McCarthy in the co and the Cowboys on the road. Here to talk about that and all things in the green and gold. Former Packer running back, coach, and three-time Super Bowl champion, Harry Sidney, everyone. What's up, sir? What's up, buddy? How you doing? How you doing? The weather is not so delightful. So this is Wisconsin, man. It's January. A small, yeah. small but feisty crowd. I love it. Love it. Not the, how big the dog is, it's right. It's a, what was that I'm just happy to see him. It's, a, it's not the size of the dog. Yeah, something, something, like, something that. like that. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Here we go. Playoff time. Yes, sir. Packers, Cowboys. You couldn't have scripted this any bigger or better. I mean, Mike McCarthy. There's so many storylines. Yes, sir. You were a part of this rivalry in the '90s. Sorry to say, Harry, but everything went Dallas's way and not Green Bay. Yes, that's true at that time because Dallas was a better team. Right. Now you go in there, you got a team in Green Bay, a bunch of, I don't want to say unknown because we've seen them play, but you got a team that's playing with house money because everybody's expecting them right. not to be successful. Right. And we've seen this from the beginning of the year. We've seen these young receivers and tight ends and offense and defensive line. You see a lot of guys all of a sudden you go, oh, look at the Green Bay Packers. Yeah, and we'll break down the boys in a little bit here, but Sunday, Lambeau yes. Field was rocking. You've got yes, a, another divisional rival. Same scenario as against the Lions last year. They had nothing to lose, and you could tell they were playing their tails off. Chicago wanted that game so bad. And after a field goal to start, Green Bay finally got the football moving down the football field. You know, I love that statement that, that everybody says, well, they want it. Everybody wants it. But some guys can play and some can't play. And unfortunately, the Packers played against guess who? The yeah. Bears. Yeah, and they won again. And they won again. And the Bears, as good as they battled, it was nice to see Green Bay take over the game. Jaden Reed with the big play down the field. And then Jordan Love finding Dontavian Wicks with that pass. I mean, wow. You know, and that's the thing about every week when I see him play, you go, dang, I thought he was good, but I didn't know he could make that throw. Yeah. The one that he fitted the needle in, in the end zone, unbelievable. And just the young, the young receivers in their route running ability. Right. When you, when you watch him, you go, man, these guys are good. When he throws it off his back foot like that, it really shows you his true arm strength. Like, you, you don't take that for granted much. Now, early in the season, he didn't connect on some of those deep throws, but the pinpoint accuracy and just, I mean, the way his body position was and he threw it across the grain, well, some guys can't make that throw. No, and I think early in the year, nobody was sure, and I think LaFleur, whoever decided to let him loose, Yep. and once they started letting him loose, you can see the – the confidence that each of the receivers have in him and the, and the, and the confidence that he has yeah. in the receivers. Well, they left some points out there on the field, and at halftime, they made some adjustments. So in that third quarter, Green Bay would have a, another solid five-minute drive. Another catch. Love to Wicks. He gets the extra effort in for the score. It was only 14-6, to six, but it felt like a bigger lead, didn't it? I mean, Green Bay simply outplayed Chicago. It, it, there was no point when you say, oh, there's one play away from Chicago turning the game around. Right. And, and I think that's because of Florida, whoever was calling the game. You know, Aaron Jones was a major part of the game to start the middle and the finish. And when he does that, yeah. that just opens things up for everybody. Well, and the moment Love fumbled, there was a little bit of a uh-oh, but... That defense yes. getting off the field on third downs, making plays, and it was a variety of different guys. Five players had sacks in that ballgame. It wasn't just a variety of different guys, but you saw an aggressive style by Barry, the D coordinator, and that's fun to see when you see, when, you, when they say, I don't think there's a receiver that can beat us, so let's lock them down and yep. get after the quarterback. Yeah, and that's what they did. They didn't score on that final drive, but they chewed up the clock all the way from whatever, five and a half they minutes. They did what they needed to do. First down after first down. Eat it up, eat it up. After first down. All right, time now for our U.S. Cellular call of the game. Late in that first half, with the Bears driving deep in Packers territory and looking to take the lead, Joe Barry and company come up with the stunt up front. Carl Brooks clears it out and down the middle. 
Kenny Clark loops around for the quarterback sack to stuff the drive to force the field goal attempt. U.S. Cellular call of the game for the first time this year comes on the defensive side of the football. And it was love to see them stunting and because it's nice when you see a defensive line say an offensive line, you can't block us. Yes. And we're going to just do a little trick here and there, a little ET stunt, and boom. And then yeah. you flush them right into uh, to, uh, Clark, and there you have it. They sealed the deal, that's for sure. All right. Speaking of talented defensive linemen yes. like Kenny Clark, coming up, we've got our special player guest of the night. TJ Slayton is in the house, everybody. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to the locker room right here at the Radisson Hotel and Conference Center. Along with Harry Sidney, I'm Burke Griffin. Please welcome Packers defensive lineman T.J. Slayton, everybody. <laughs> well, back in the playoffs. How did that feel? I, I was watching you guys come down the tunnel, and we couldn't take video of it. I was thinking, oh, my goodness. And there's probably a good reason. There was a lot of hooting, hollering, and about 53 players, or more than that, just super pumped up wasn't that cool yeah the fans are always you know rumbling making this uh stadium like rock a little bit so it's always fun to run out of the tunnel that was a very cool moment for everybody on that field uh definitely <laughs> you know you florida you're here now early in the season you see the defense one way now later on the season you see to seem like a aggressive you guys are front stunting and stuff what's been different uh, you know, it's just getting later in the season, so everybody's kind of used to, like, you know, everybody kind of pulling back off the pedal a little bit because everybody's been banged up, and, mm -hmm. you know, it's just a long season. Your legs start to get wear and tear. And then <clears throat> we had, like, a couple of practices in the indoor that kind of, like, <laughs> like, changed us a little bit. So it was, like, coming into that game, we was all, like, kind of playing, like, super fast. So it was, like, it's like it's a rest thing. You know, everybody kind of, like, kind of bands together trying to figure out, like, what we need like as players to you know to help us get our bodies back so we can be able, be able to play at a, a high standard when we play out there. Well, between you, Kenny Clark, and Devontae Wyatt, those are three brawlers in the middle there. What have you learned yeah. from a guy like Kenny who is a pro bowler and one of the best in the business? Uh, it's just like mistakes are going to happen. You know, mistakes are going to happen. It's, it's never going to look pretty. You know, it's like it. It's the game of football and it's the NFL. Like sometimes you don't always have the best hand placement. Sometimes your feet ain't always there. Uh, and then like you just got to get off blocks and you know you just like, as long as you have a strong mindset to just move forward and, and just play the next play, you're gonna be okay. That's what we're like. That's pretty much what I learned from Kenny. It's just mm -hmm. like and then just like, just have a positive mindset. Even though it's not, even though it might not be going your way, just have a positive mindset and just believe in what you do. Who's that guy in the locker room that when he starts talking, everybody starts listening? Uh, we got a couple of guys like that in the locker room. You know, you got RG, you got Preston, you, you know, you got Jordan Love, you got Aaron Jones, like just some of our p big key guys, you know, Elton. Like when those guys talk, everybody listens, but we kind of got all of those people like Devondre, like it's just like we're just so band together as a group that like when anybody really talks like we all just kind of got to see what they have to say yeah it's kind of crazy to think that on a team that is the youngest in the nfl kenny clark preston smith yeah, and yeah. devondre campbell are the old guys yeah, yeah they are the old guys <laughs> over 30. <laughs> i mean you know when, you, when it comes to football it's like it's really a mindset it's really like like older players like from from back in the day they might say different but it's really a mind thing like especially like in our day age with all of the things you have to recover with mm -hmm. and things, all the things you have to help your body it's really just like a mindset it's like how well are you going to take your body and how prepared are you going to make your body for you to go out there and play every snap that you need to play and be focused all the time you know with saying that um I, oh, my wife's going to get mad because i said all the time what's in <laughs> <laughs> um what are you doing to make sure, like you said, it's a long season? What are you doing to make sure that you're available game in and game out? That's a little different than most people might know. Uh, to make myself available? Yeah, because uh, you had not missed a game. Yeah, folks out there, yeah. in his pro career, first year, second year, and this season, yeah. not a single game missed. That is an amazing yes, accomplishment yes, in the NFL. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, I don't know. I just kind of just, you know, 
I, don't, I really don't have an answer for why. I just haven't missed the game. Right? Yeah, I just haven't missed the game. So. Mr. Durability, durability, that's for sure. Well, you, you gotta, you know, especially when Kenny Clark hears a nose for all those years and then you come in and then all of a sudden you're a nose and he's playing another spot. Mm-hmm. I mean, eyes are on you. Yeah. Have you felt the pressure? Uh, no, not really. Uh, being on the inside, you don't really, like, feel the pressure of, like, the fans or, okay. like, mm-hmm. of, or, of, of, like, you know, people just trying to, like, always come at y'all. But mm-hmm. it's just, like, you know, having Kenny there, it's just, like, him being a nose so I can, like, learn okay. all my all my nose stuff I need to know from him. <laughs> right. And then he goes out to three, so that, that gives him a little bit more freedom that he didn't have the first seven years. Yeah. So it's okay. just, like... Now that I'm here, it's just like now he's he's had his his career year when he, and has he's hit, hit his stat line for his stacks. So it's like we're all helping each other. Yep. You know, it's like I'm I'm improving, Devonte is improving, our rookies are coming along. So it's like we're all just really just helping each other. It all just kind of like a trickle down effect. Yep. All right. When we come back, we're talking Cowboys. We'll go in the zone with Cam Nazir and Josh Myers. But first, it's time for our Easy Tab Fan Cam. You're watching Locker Room right here at the Radisson Hotel and Conference Center. Welcome back to Locker Room right here at the Radisson Hotel and Conference Center. Snowy night, but a feisty crowd here. Yes, sir. Thank mm-hmm. you to everyone out there who came and for mm-hmm. you watching at home. Thanks for watching. All right, TJ Slayton's our special guest, the Cowboys. Yep. Look, they got an offense, man. Uh, first in the league in points, second, I believe, in yards per game. Mm-hmm. They put a, as a viewer looking back, they beat all the teams they should, but they've been beaten by some pretty good teams too. Like, they, yeah. there's some. Some weaknesses there. What do you see on tape when you look at Dak Prescott and CeeDee Lamb and Tony Pollard running the football? Well, I see that they have a, a great game plan. Uh, they have they have great guys over there, Dak, CD, and of course the running back and the O-line too, who are a lot of uh, veteran guys that we gotta uh, get by. But, you know, it's not, it's not like we're scared or no. anything, but that's a great football team. So we have to go in there. We have to come with our A game. You know, it's a playoffs. So, you know, they're going to come out. You know, they're going to play hard. And we just got to stop the run. And, you know, just really, I feel like if we put a cap on CD and hold Tony Pollard to uh, maybe like two yards, yard rushing, I feel like we'll be good. Sounds like he looked at our keys of the game already. <laughs> I think so. There we go. So, you know, Senna, when you were growing up, what team did you, what was your team when you were growing up? The Browns. The Browns? Yep. The Browns. How, how why, come? How come the Browns? Them? I knew nothing about nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I just knew I wanted to get into sports. So I turned on the TV and the Browns were losing and I yep. chose the Browns. Okay. I turned on the TV, the Boston Celtics was losing, so I lost the Celtics. So <laughs> wow. those have been kind of my team since the fifth grade, uh, and I just kind of ran with them. As I got older, I started like just looking into the history and what it was. and yeah. got, So by the time I hit the ninth grade, I was playing football. It was like, hey, this is fun. I'm football player, basketball player. It's yep. like, cool. <laughs> yeah, yep. Lefty Letterman. I know you played power forward. No, I was a center. You was know. a center. All right. Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah, he's a pretty, pretty good basketball player. A little back touch, in the, huh? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. Well, one guy you do battle with definitely during training camp is our guest this week on In the Zone here on Locker Room. Here's Cam Vizier presented by Oneida Nation. Here with Packers offensive lineman Josh Myers. Josh, this has been quite a season for this team. You know, how interesting has it been seeing what last season and the results that that held into this year where it's such a young team and everyone's trying to grow together? Yeah, it's funny because, you know, obviously there are some similarities with our record and the the playing game and everything. Uh, But the seasons themselves and the players on the team are so crazily different. Um, I don't know. It's just wild. Do you feel like playing at Ohio State, playing for a big time program, dealing with adversity there because you're constantly playing the best teams, whether it's in conference or in the playoff period, do you think that prepared you for dealing with adversity in the NFL? Uh, yeah, man. I think that um, I think it prepared me great. I think I think as a college kid coming out, I was as prepared as I personally could have been um, for big games, just because, like you said, I, I played in for sure my fair share of them uh, at Ohio State. Before Ohio State, why football? Why was that your sport? Oh man, I uh, I love basketball too. Um, 
but I figured out pretty quick that six five center is not gonna not gonna get it done. <laughs> um, so, uh, I ended, but no, nah, but I ended up I ended up just absolutely falling in love with football. I don't know, man, just something about it um, couldn't take me away from it. Did something by playing basketball yeah. help you in the football realm? Yeah, uh, I think a lot of things helped. For one, just yeah, getting more games in on a yearly basis when I was a kid. But then also, I think as an offensive lineman, it was huge for footwork. I thought it helped my footwork and my feet out a lot playing basketball. Day-to-day -day life of Josh Myers, what's it like outside of football? Oh man, off season, I'm uh, working out in the mornings, uh, fishing, doing some golfing, depending on the day, uh, hanging out with friends and family. So I'll be the first to say I've fished before. I've never caught a fish. What advice would you give to someone that's never caught a fish to catch a fish? Get a guide. <laughs> get a guide. Well, what kind of guide? Well, what kind of fish are you looking for? You can go if you're going salt water, then you got to get. I would go deep sea fishing, and get a guide. If you're up here. Um, probably walleye, get a walleye guide. I grew up bass fishing personally, so I don't, there, were, there weren't any, any bass fishing guides in Ohio though, so you're, you might be out of luck on that one. Well, good thing I'm not in Ohio, yeah, right? I'm in Wisconsin. Yeah. There you go, you get a walleye. I'll go, go, I'll go for the yeah. walleye. All right, thank you, fellas. Time now for our one minute drill, TJ. These are real hard hitting questions. Uh oh, here we go. This is where the journalism hold on, really steps hold on. in. Best thing you bought with your money so far? My truck. Truck? What, what kind of car? What kind of truck? It's a Chevy. It's a Chevy Silverado 2021. All right. Okay. Go-to jam when you're cruising down the road. Yeah. Uh, Go-to. Like, uh, what, what do you? What music are you listening to? Some probably like some Teddy Pendergrass. All right. All right. Biggest you know? Hold up. Teddy Pendergrass. What do you yeah. know about Teddy Pendergrass? <laughs> oh, I just grew up like that. Okay. Oh my goodness. Okay. Oh man, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> the man's got some class. I, I, I'm you know? checking that out. Man. He's got some class over there. Yeah. All right. Biggest influence in your life? Uh, uh, I would probably say like my mom. All right. Favorite NFL player growing up? Oh, man. And you're a kid. Who, do, who did you want to be? That's crazy you say that. Uh, favorite? Well, you, can, you can't fault me. At the time, I was an O-lineman. I right, was right. an O-lineman yeah, yeah, yeah. in high school. So uh, my favorite player to watch was uh, Greg Robinson. Mm, very nice. All right, if you could be an athlete in a different sport, who would it be? If I could, like somebody else. Kobe, Jordan, Mike Tyson, Tiger Woods, whoever. I wouldn't mind being Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson? Yeah, I wouldn't mind being Mike Tyson. Las Vegas or the beach? The beach. Dogs or cats? I got three dogs. Golf or fishing? Golf. Steak, fish, or chicken? Chicken. Chicken. TJ, yeah. what does TJ stand for? Uh, I'm a junior. I have my dad's full name. So, uh, to Daryl Slade Jr. To Daryl Jr. All right, for finally for to Daryl, you wear number 93. I've seen you do something after the plays. Yes, sir. Well, what is it, my man? And where did you know about the grave digger? I didn't. I didn't know about the grave digger. Uh, my coach came up to me. He was right before the Seahawks preseason game. Yeah. He was just like, hey, like, like everybody was telling me, like, you know, about the grave digger. Yeah. So I was just like, what is that? Like, he was, like, gave me the rundown on Get Her and cool. everything. So. He kind of encouraged me to like do it, and then once I did it, it kind of like blew up. So. Oh yeah, <laughs> nice. and you know yeah. what? We want to see some of the grave diggers yes, sir. on yes, sir. Sunday against the Cowboys. Oh, when yeah, we come definitely. back, it's time to wrap up the show. Don't go anywhere, everybody. <laughs> Welcome back to Locker Room here at the Radisson Hotel and Conference Center. That is Doug and Pat Becker from Hortonville. They are enjoying the best seats in the house courtesy of Viper Industrial. We talked a little bit already with our main deep man, defensive lineman, TJ Slayton. As far as the game, the keys to the game are concerned, that is brought to you by the dispensary. He pretty much said it all already. If you run the rock with Aaron Jones, three 100 plus rushing games in a row for him, get the ball moving, shut down C.D. Lamb and make a play, whether it's turnovers, special teams, or what else do you think, Harry? What do you need to do, man, to get this win? Uh, we need to lock in. We got to hit the quarterback. We got to make him move around a little bit. Uh, we can't let him get out of the pocket. He is a scrambler. He yep. will scramble if he has to. Uh, one, we got to play sound defense. We got to tackle. Uh, we got to create disruption. All right, he's TJ Slayton, Packers defensive lineman. For Harry Sidney, I'm Burke Griffin. Thanks for tuning in to this edition of Locker Room. Thank you for watching Locker Room. 